Hello, everyone again. My name is Olga Tiber, and I'm Vice President of California Skin Institute. We're so happy you were able to join us today. Um, I'd love to introduce our two wonderful speakers. Uh, we have Dr. Mina Zaray and Patricia Miller, who, is jo who are joining us today. Um, Patricia Miller is our CSI um, skin care consultant. And Dr. Mina Zaray is American Board of Dermatology Certified Dermatologist with over five years of experience in the field. Dr. Zaray is also a skilled Mohs and reconstructive surgeon, specializing in the diagnosis and treatment of a variety of skin conditions, including acne, eczema, psoriasis, pigmentation, skin cancers, flaps, and grafts. Um, she also does, she performs cosmetic surgery, laser surgery, PRP for rejuvenation, and hair loss treatment. Also, treatment of black veins, also known as sclerotherapy, Botox, fillers, chemical peels, microneedling, and kybella. So without further ado, please help me welcome Dr. Mina Zaray. Yes, thank you, Olga. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Zaray, as Olga mentioned, and I'm a board-certified dermatologist and also a most surgeon. I see a variety of patients from general dermatology to cosmetic surgery and procedures, such as Botox, fillers, PRP, and also I take care of skin cancers and also reconstructions afterwards. So thank you for joining us today for this seminar. And today we're gonna to touch base on a few uh, important diseases and problems in uh, dermatology. So first we're gonna go over some protection and then skin cancer, wrinkles and fine lines, as well as a skin tightening. And at the end, we're gonna talk about acne and hair loss. So as you know, all these topics are very, very vast, but you know, we're just gonna go over them just for um, uh, kind of like for an introduction. And at the end, Patricia will uh, share with you some of our skincare routines that we, we would like our patients to follow. And also she's gonna share some special offers from CSI with you today. So starting with sun protection. So it is very, very important. Reason why is that sun exposure over years can actually cause skin cancers. So as you might see in your relatives or you know, even yourself might experience it, there are skin lesions that can pop up when, uh, when we get older, and these are all because of sun exposure. Some of them are obviously benign, so that's why you have to go to your dermatologist to check you every year uh, in order to find the, the malignant ones and the concerning ones. And also, on the other hand, sun exposure can cause wrinkling and uh, changing the texture and color of your skin, so that's another reason to protect yourself from sun. And the third reason is that some of the diseases such as autoimmune disorders like lupus or dermatomyositis that you might have heard of, this can get exacerbated and have flares because of sun ex exposure. So the first step that all of us have to take is sun protection. So what can we do? So sun protection starts with physical protection. As you can see also in this picture, uh, this lady is protecting herself wearing sunglasses, wide brim hat, also long sleeve shirt. What else can we do? We can check the UV index uh, every day. You can check that on your phone, you know, or uh, on the internet and find out what the UV index is. So on the days that UV index is high, I usually recommend not going to the beach or work outside for longer hours. You can also watch the clock for peak UV hours, which is between 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So if you can stay outside during those times or if you can seek some shade and make sure you have physical protection at that time, that would be very helpful. And also one thing that I want to bring to your attention is that when the weather is cloudy, don't think that there wouldn't be any UV and any sun exposure. Actually, clouds can only block 20 to 40% of the UV rays. So you're still at risk and you have to protect your skin. And also last but not least uh, step is to use the sunscreens. So there are so many different types of sunscreens, but very shortly, the most important thing that you have to look in a sunscreen is to have SPF 30 and above. And we can also talk about the details later, but they can be mineral or chemical, but basically you want this PF to be higher than 30 and also being broad spectrum, meaning they should cover both UVA and UVP. So all this information are on the sunscreens, make sure you read it and purchase the one that goes the best for your skin. And here I want to uh, take a moment and tell you that every 
person, regardless of their history of skin cancer, regardless of their ethnicity or sun exposure, need to be seen by a dermatologist once a year. So that would be your skin cancer screening that should happen every year. And at any age, it, it can be very, very helpful to, in order to prevent you know, some of the skin cancers and also to treat some of them earlier than later. So talking about a skin cancer, uh, it is actually the most common type of a skin cancer in the United States. So it's very, very important for us to be aware of this. And uh, again, see your dermatologist for yearly checkups. If you have a history of skin cancers in the family, that puts you at a higher risk. So you can even be seen every six months. So what happens, what, what causes this cancer? It's basically UV exposure, as I explained. It can be natural from sun, but also from tanning lamps. So artificial UV can also cause a skin cancer. As you can see in this picture on the right-hand side, our skin have multiple layers. So UVA, which causes aging, usually goes deeper to the skin. And that's why it can cause those wrinkle, wrinkling. And in some people, you can see kind of like a uh, leathery texture of the skin, and it's all because of UVA. And we also have UVB, which causes burning of the skin, and usually goes to the superficial uh, layer of the skin, which is epidermis. So again, with physical uh, protection and also sunscreen, you can prevent the absorption and being exposed to this UV rays and protect your skin. So when you see a dermatologist, what happens? So if you see a precancerous solution that we call acne keratosis, which is usually a scaly spot, we usually use this freezing gun, which is liquid nitrogen to freeze this spots, or we give you topical creams. Again, I want to emphasize on diagnosing this, cancer, this precancerous earlier than later before they become full-blown cancers. And on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see that you know, these are different types of skin cancers. Basal cell, squamous cell, melanoma, miracle cell carcinomas. And I put this picture down here just to bring, bring it up to your attention that this is skin cancers in early stages. They can really look like, you know, nothing, even like a pimple. I have patients who come in with history of having this, you know, non-healing pimple for a few months. And when I do a biopsy and I take a look at it, it's a basal cell carcinoma. So that's why you have to make sure that any spot that doesn't go away, keeps bleeding and staying on your skin needs to be checked. And when they become cancerous, there are different you know, treatment options that we can do, but I just don't wanna bore you with this, but on the left-hand side, this is about Mohs surgery, which is a special type of surgery that I do uh, for high-risk skin cancers uh, on head and neck and also on the legs or in, on your hands. And this would be, um, uh, very, very effective with less than 1% recurrence. So 99% of successful treatment of your cancer. So next we're gonna move on to wrinkles and fine lines. So another reason for sun protection because main reason of that other than aging, it's also sun. Maybe you have noticed people who are drivers, they usually have more wrinkles and more sun damage on the left side of their skin because they have more sun exposure from the left side. So what can we do for the wrinkles? Again, sunscreen, and I want to emphasize on a very good skincare and skincare routine. So Patricia will go over you know, different options for your skincare routine, but what I want to emphasize on is first having a good moisturizer and also a good sunscreen. Vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, it can also help with these pigmentations that you have on your skin. And very, very importantly, a retinol. It should be in your skincare routine. You usually use it at night and that would be helpful in kind of regenerating your skin and also helping with a fine wrinkle as well as the texture and tone of your skin. So what else can we do for fine lines and wrinkles? So when you go to your dermatologist for a cosmetic consult, you can always go over these different options based on the wrinkles that you have you know, and the goal of treatment that you have. I, I will happily go over all the options but just very briefly, we can use neurotoxins, including Botox or Dysport. And this, are, this can be also uh, therapeutic and also preventative. So you can prevent some deep lines by starting early and you know, kind of keeping up with your neurotoxins. One other option is to use chemical peels, such as salicylic acid or TCA. All these chemical peels can help with the skin texture, with the wrinkles, 
bit of this pigmentations, and they can even be helpful in acne and acne scarring. I'm gonna go over that later on. And what, we, uh, what else we do? In my Fountain Valley office, we do platelet-rich plasma and microneedling, and I can see very, very good results with these two entities. Uh, and uh, especially with microneedling, you can see new collagen formation by your own skin. So over time and as time passes, you can see better and better results. And finally, fillers. Fillers can also help with some of the fine lines and wrinkles that we cannot um, improve with other uh, modalities that I just mentioned. So we can do some filler injections into the perioral lines that are usually very bothering up to my patients. We can use them to enhance lips, to fill out the, the uh, folds of, of uh, this area, nasolabial folds, and your under eyes. So there are different options to, uh, to address all these wrinkles and lines. So next, we're going to move on to skin tightening. So skin tightening is basically the same um, treatment and routine as wrinkles. So if you start early with, with a very good skin care, you can actually have this skin tightening throughout your, uh, your uh, aging process. But what else can we do? We can do microneedling. As you can see on the left-hand side, this is from a study of uh, one of the FDA cleared uh, devices called the skin pen that I use here in my office. So we use this uh, after four treatment, you can see that all these fine wrinkles on the neck has been improved and also the skin has been tightened. So on, on, on the neck of this lady, you can see that the skin is tighter. And this is only after four times of treatment that you can see all these good results. And again, if you give it more time, your body will also uh, make collagen and it's gonna look even better. And on the right-hand side, I have PRP, platelet-rich plasma which basically we draw your blood, we're gonna centrifuge it and um, separate the red blood cells from the platelet rich plasma, which is the golden part of it. And I call it liquid gold because it's really uh, effective in improving skin texture and tightening of the skin. So these are two procedures that I do in my office at Fountain Valley. And also I do microneedling in Anaheim. So um, very, very briefly about hair loss, it's a very, very vast and important topic. I just wanted to mention it because uh, if you reach out to your dermatologist sooner than later, it could be very helpful uh, in order to change the uh, outcome of your treatment. So patients with hair loss, sometimes they have scarring hair loss, which means the hair that is lost would never come back. But what we can do in those cases, we can stop losing the hair and you can keep the hair that you have when you see the dermatologist. In some patients, it can be non-scarring, meaning that we can do something like giving you medications or do some injections in order to grow the hair back. In those cases also, if you don't get treatment chronically, they can become scarring and we cannot bring the hair back. So it's very important, as soon as your hair loss starts, make an, make an appointment with your dermatologist and seek help. So for my, my patients, when I see them, I do trichoscopy, which is basically looking at the hair follicles, making sure they have healthy hair follicles. And I also run some blood works to make sure there are no deficiencies that I can give them supplementations to help with their hair loss. After defining the type of hair loss that my patients have, I might put them on medications. Some of them are um, oral medicines that they can take, or some of them are topical medicines that they can put on. And also I have patients who are asking for natural treatments or the ones who the medications are working, but they want to enhance the treatment. In those cases, I usually offer PRP, which I just talked about, the liquid gold in combination with microneedling. This is uh, actually a new uh, kind of treatment modality. You might have heard of PRP alone for hair loss, but nowadays uh, we kind of combine it with microneedling and there's been studies showing very improvement, very much improvement with this combining these two techniques together. So uh, these pictures are not from my patients, they're from the study that I cited um, below here. So you can see in this lady on the left-hand side after four, uh, four sessions of treatment with PRP and microneedling, her hair texture is improved and she has uh, hair growth. And it even worked in this gentleman on the right-hand side uh, with chronic hair loss, you can see some improvement. So what I want to emphasize is basically, you know, see your dermatologist, there are, there are different options that we can offer you, 
but it's important to know which type of hair loss you have to address it uh, accordingly. And finally, I want to talk about acne and acne scarring. Uh, so for acne and acne scarring, same thing. The most important thing would be your skincare routine. Even if you're suffering from acne or just to prevent the, the flares to happen, it's very important to have a very good skincare routine for, for acne prone skin. So Patricia will also go over, uh, will go over that with, with different products that we have and that you can try. So after I see my acne patients, depending on their age, uh, on the severity of their acne, I offer either topical medications or antibiotics or even more advanced ones such as anti-hormonal medicines or even Accutane and isotretinoin. So it all depends on what I see on the day of the examination. So other than medications, what can we do for acne and acne scarring? So chemical pills are very effective, especially salicylic acid has been studied and shown that it can treat and prevent acne. It can also be helpful with this pigmentation that happens you know, due to acne lesions. So it's very effective, very helpful for acne. But acne scarring is a different uh, problem because uh, although we have all these medicines, all, all these oral medications for acne, but unfortunately nothing really works for scarring throughout uh, like topically or taking it by mouth. The only thing that can be helpful are kind of procedural, um, procedural uh, cosmetic dermatology, which we offer microneedling in my office. And as you can see in this uh, picture, this is a patient with a very severe acne scars, as you can see. And after six treatment, there is a very significant improvement. And there are other things that people can do, such as lasers or uh, Fraxel laser is another one. But I really like microneedling because it also um, promotes collagen making uh, throughout the time. So even if this is after six treatments, if you keep going and keep doing it, you can see even better results. It also works on the, uh, on the fine lines and wrinkles. So you get benefit for your, your acne scars and also for your lines and wrinkles. So again, this was just a short uh, and brief overview on different you know, uh, problems in, in dermatology that we can address. So again, definitely do a good sun protection. Make sure you see your dermatologist for any problems sooner than later so we can address it for you. Uh, so I see patients in two offices with CSI at Fountain Valley and Anaheim. So feel free to give us a call and schedule an appointment. And uh, here on, I'm gonna um, uh, ask Patricia to continue with, uh, with our skincare. She is our skincare consultant at CSI and she's gonna introduce our products and special offers for you. Patricia. Thank you, Dr. Zaray. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for jumping on today for a call. Um, again, my name is Patricia Mueller. I am the California Skin Institute skincare consultant. Um, and today I just wanted to go over um, a couple of really great products that we have. What we've done is kind of baselined everything to a very simple routine for you. I know sometimes skincare can get quite overwhelming. Um, there's off the shelf skincare and then there is also medical grade skincare. Um, at CSI, I would, I'm happy to share that we do only carry medical grade skincare. Um, but today I just wanted to grab a couple of our favorites and most important products and put it into regimens for you, both morning and night. And then I'll hit on um, a couple of specialty products as well. But to just go over these to get you comfortable with these, maybe you already have similar products in your routine currently that you can go ahead and plug and play a couple, or maybe this is something completely new for you. And this would be a great opportunity to learn where to start um, and how to get going on a great anti-aging regimen so that later on as we age, we have less of these coarser fine lines and wrinkles to battle with um, different treatments. So jumping right on in, um, I'll ask for the next slide. We're going to jump into our morning and evening routines. Um, both routines are going to begin with a very great gentle soothing cleanser that I'll go in depth here. Um, and then in the morning, we're actually going to go with our antioxidant serum. Um, Dr. Zare had mentioned earlier today, it's our vitamin C E power serum. And then we finish the morning off with a really beautiful sunscreen. We both have tinted and sheer. So I'll go over that. 
In the evening, again, we'll do that same gentle soothing cleanser. So that's fantastic. We've already cut down one product. You don't have to have two different cleansers. You can just use the one for both times a day. Um, but at night, we're actually going to be using our retinols. So I'll be sharing a little bit more about that as we do have different formulations and strengths. So that's something definitely important to note. Dr. Zaray did mention earlier in our, on our call that this is something that's an absolute must in our routine. So I'll go ahead and share more as far as that goes. And then we'll always end with a beautiful moisturizer, um, which we do carry the lipid barrier cream, which is multifunctional in that we're not just applying a moisturizer, you're doing so much more for your skin. So I'll just briefly jump into each one of these for you guys. Starting with our gentle soothing cleanser. Um, when we're looking at cleansers, there's a couple of really big things to take note um, and look for. Sometimes it's very important to get something of a cleanser that feels like it's almost taking off too much of your door, too much of your dirt and oil, and then can leave your skin a little dry and agitated. So I'm happy to share that the, our gentle soothing cleanser here at CSI will actually go ahead and do a deep, efficient cleaning of your pores, but leave a very nice hydrated feel to the surface of your skin. So it's leaving you a very clean palette to start with your routine and everything we're going to be applying on type on top. So this is suitable for all skin types. This is including your most sensitive. Um, it does contain green tea polyphenols. Um, this is really meant, it's an antioxidant powerhouse to help calm and soothe the skin down. Um, so again, this is your cleanser that you'll be going with morning and night. Again, does an elegant job of cleaning that dirt and debris from those pores, but leaving that skin nice hydrated and prepped ready for that next topical treatment. Jumping over to our next step in our morning routine is our vitamin C um, antioxidant at CSI, we call that our C plus E power serum. So what can you expect from this serum? We hear a lot of times the serum is a must, but there are quite different amounts of serums that we can use. This serum here is really meant and perfect for the morning because this really helps to brighten up the skin. As we age, our skin gets dehydrated and we start losing that luminosity to the skin. So this is something that will bring that back. It will also help um, with the visible signs of aging as far as dullness, like I just discussed, discoloration. Um, but it also does a really beautiful job with the other antioxidants in here that help to go ahead and fight and repair the skin. So we're looking at the beginning of fine lines, wrinkles, the loss of volume. We're really looking to repair that. So again, what's beautiful about this serum is multifunctional. We'll do a couple of things for you at once. It has a very beautiful texture without it making you feel oily. It'll go ahead and soak right into the skin um, so that you're set for the day. And then our sunscreens, Dr. Zaray had really did a beautiful job of enforcing that these are an absolute must. Um, we do have a couple options as far as um, uh, CSI carries for um, sunscreens. Um, both are going to be physical, which is uh, very important to note. Um, so they are reef safe. The first we have our tinted BB cream. This is SPF 30. So we're right where we want to be as far as protection um, from UVA and UVB. But this also does have a beautiful tint to it, which is universal. Sometimes I have patients come in and they get a little concerned as far as if this is going to match or not. But it does have a universal pigment technology that provides a sheer, but a very slight healthy tint to it. So it blends beautifully within your skin and soaks right in providing that physical protection that you need. The my favorite part about these sunscreens that we carry is going to be, again, the multifunctionality. I'm the kind of girl that I would like to do just a couple of steps, but have those couple of steps work far more for me. Um, so this is going to be that sunscreen for you. It's not just going to protect your skin from the sun, but what it'll also do is inside, we have different antioxidants that help to calm the skin down, neutralize it, helps to immediately start fighting off um, any of that pigment as well and repair what maybe pigment you already have. So with especially any kind of brightening that you might need, there are antioxidants in this sunscreen that will go ahead and do that for you while at the same time protecting yourself from future um, potential um, damage. We do have a similar sunscreen in sheer 
Again, multifunctional, so it does also have those um, antioxidant powers for you as far as helping repair your skin while protecting it from the sun. Um, this is just going to be in a sheer form for those that don't like the, um, the tint um, or don't prefer a tint. This is um, a lot of males will gravitate more towards this, but our ladies as well. This is again, 100% mineral, so reef safe and also has those antioxidant powers. So again, as far as your morning routine goes, cleanse, vitamin C, and then don't forget that sunscreen. So you have a couple options if your sunscreens, whichever way you would like to go. And then jumping into our nighttime regimen, again, we're gonna start off with the cleanser and we're gonna move over into retinols. Retinols are an absolute must in any type of routine, um, no matter what type of skin care, um, skin type you're actually working with. Um, whether it's you're looking for anti-aging, if you're looking for acne, if you're looking for pigment control, retinol is that ingredient that goes into the skin and helps to repair and restore, supporting that skin barrier so that your skin can work far more for you where it should really repair itself and also soak in everything else that we're adding as far as different antioxidants like the vitamin C. So the vitamin C and, and the retinol, I want you guys to think as the dynamic duo as far as your routine goes, vitamin C in the morning and retinols at night. Now it's imperative that we use retinols at night for those that don't know that um, it's, it's best when it's away from the sun. So definitely a nighttime use. Now we do have three different strengths. So I encourage you, um, if you are interested to come in and get a consultation based off if you have tried a retinol before or have not. Retinol in the past has had a, consist or a consistency of leaving the skin a little aggravated, slightly red. Um, that's when we know it's working. We at CSI have a new formulation now with this retinol here that it does not actually aggravate that skin. Um, so it's gonna be really great for a chance for you guys to come in, have a consultation with us, figure out which formulation um, is going to be best for you um, as far as the strength. And eventually we can get you onto a routine where you can use this every single night and definitely see the skin benefiting from this. So what you'll be able to see from using retinol in just a couple of weeks is the overall tightness and firmness of the skin. The appearance of your pores will look smaller and then definitely any of the discoloration. So what we're looking for is the overall evenness and tone of the skin. Um, and with the vitamin C, again, bringing that in in the morning, the bringing that alive that brightness. So again, I'm encouraging everyone to come in, um, get your consultation for your retinol. For those especially who may be on a medication, it's important to consult with your physician to ensure that any of the medication that you are on will not aggravate the retinol or vice versa. And here are some before and afters that you could see as far as what you can expect. This is just after a few weeks use of that retinol serum. And lastly, in our routine, we always want a fabulous moisturizer. Again, when I mention multifunctional, this is your multifunctional moisturizer. Instead of adding too many serums and creams, this one lipid barrier cream will do it all for you. It's loaded with different peptides, ceramides, all meant to pr really promote that collagen um, and elasticity in our skin. So at nighttime after our retinol, it's important to go ahead and add hydration and also work on that collagen. So overnight our skin really can repair. So by morning when we're waking up, we have a beautiful canvas to wake up to and smile to. Um, this lipid barrier cream has a very beautiful, elegant consistency um, provided with multiple different antioxidants to again, help and support that barrier and skin function um, and different humectants, just like I had mentioned, to deeply hydrate the skin, which is all very important when we're looking at anti-aging. So again, multifaceted, one product that can do so much for you. It's in, in one easy step at night. And then lastly, we're going to note on our two um, scar products that we have. Um, now, this is not just for anyone that maybe had a previous scar. A, this is something that will be great for you to use while you are in recovery. You can you immediately use it post incision. Um, so great example for um, 
like we were talking about today, Dr. Zare had mentioned her most surgeries, um, or you can also use this post-procedure. Any of the anti-aging procedures that you are receiving, you can utilize these products. And the goal of these products is to help expedite your healing process, but not only expedite the healing process, but we know sometimes scars can turn darker than we would prefer, or to, they will leave a darker, um, a deeper, coarser feel to the skin. So th this scar recovery gel and the next product I'm going to go over really is designed to help provide um, that chance for the skin to heal with the minimal scarring and pigmentation changes. These, this is a scar recovery gel you'll use until the wound is completely healed. So you'll actually go through the entire bottle. You'll use it day and night. Again, can be used immediately post-procedure or post-incision. Um, it's translucent and odorless, but a really great job to protect and create that optimal um, space for the skin to really provide that renewal and healing in a beautiful facet. And then the last product we have here is our daily scar care SPF 45, similar ingredients to that scar gel, but this is really to help protect, especially the coloring and discoloration of your scar. Um, so if we don't want to end up with, you know, a darker looking scar, this is a SPF that we now carry that is formulated specifically for that wound repair healing. Um, and then also that SPF protection. And this is SPF 45. So we do um, have a couple of specials going on. I think Colleen, I'll pass it down over to you. And then I think we'll open it up to questions. Thank you, Patricia. It's actually Olga here. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Zare, for this wonderful presentation. And thank you, Patricia. This was very informative. Um, it's time for questions. And we have received a few questions um, ahead of the presentation. And um, if you can, yeah, please go back to this slide. Uh, you also see some specials here on the screen. So I will um, ask those questions, but I, I wanna make sure everybody knows that you can scan with your phone camera, these QR codes, and it will take you right over to the CSI anniversary sale or the CSI skin scare sale. So both um, actually, Offers both offers expire this Friday, so you have a whole week to take advantage of them. They're great offers. Uh, the anniversary sale is 15% off on all cosmetic treatments, and then you can use 20% off on all skincare on our website, CaliforniaSkinInstitute.com. Uh, but the questions that we have received, Dr. Zare, first one is for you. Uh, what would be the best sunscreen, and what should one look for in a sunscreen? Yeah, so it's a very good uh, it's a very good question. So sunscreen, as I mentioned, there are so many different types, and as Patricia brought it up to your attention, there are like different types such as mineral and chemical. Uh, so mineral ones are very safe and it, it, they're good to use because whenever whenever you apply them on, they immediately uh, become effective. And so if you're going outside, you don't have to wait for them to work. But the chemical sun, sunscreens, you have to wait about like 30 minutes to work. So it's important to find a sunscreen with mineral ingredients. So which the main one is a zinc oxide. So that's a very important factor to look for. And obviously SPF, so higher is better, but basically all you need is SPF 30. And if you go on higher SPF, it means that you're gonna have longer time of protection, but for most of them, you just need to reapply your sunscreen. So if you're planning to spend the day at the beach all day or just doing gardening or even inside the house, you know, be aware of the, the UV light that can go through the windows. So definitely reapply your sunscreen at least every two to three hours. So that would be another important thing. So when you purchase a sunscreen, preferably a mineral one with zinc oxide, having SPF at least 30. And also, you know, take, uh, take, it, um, uh, take a good uh, care of your skin. If you have acne prone skin, if you have oily skin, make sure you get the one which is non-comedogenic. So the ones that, that Patricia went over, they, they actually have all these, you know, criteria in them. And also the, the feeling and the look of the sunscreen, I realize it's very important. So the sheer sunscreen, you really don't get any kind of whitening of your skin, although it has an ox zinc oxide and it gives you a right amount of protection. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Zray. And I do believe all CSI sunscreens are mineral sunscreens so that you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, and we have another question for Patricia. I have sensitive skin. Can I still use retinol? Yeah, really great question. Um, I've seen this time and time again when patients come in um, and they've maybe tried a retinol from a friend or heard about it or maybe haven't had the right consultation. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, had experienced that agitation to the skin. Um, really what that means is that you weren't using maybe the correct um, treatment uh, formulation for your specific skin type because it is quite an active um, ingredient. So so we do at CSI, the retinol that I had shared with you all today, um, the formulation it entails also does have the green tea polyphenol antioxidant, which is only goal is to go in, help support, calm, and soothe the skin um, from any redness or irritation. So the combination of this antioxidant along with the retinol um, in a lower formulation would actually be the perfect step for a patient maybe who has never used a retinol or has had sensitivity to retinol before. So my recommendation is start lower with our CSI retinol. Um, if needed, you can start using it once every two days, once every three days, up till your skin gets accustomed to this up to a daily. And eventually, um, like myself, I was actually that same patient type. I was pleasantly surprised to see I was able to jump up to the stronger strength, not the highest yet, I'm still working on it, but even to even the medium strength, which was to me quite um, astonishing as I have never been able to touch a retinol before. So to answer the question one more time, yes, you can. Again, highly um, recommend that you come in for your skincare consultation if that is the fact um, and you do need help to make sure that we're giving you the right um, process to introduce that to your routine. Great. Thank you, Patricia. And just to jump on that question, we have another one uh, that came in. Should vitamin C serum make my skin red? Vitamin C should not actually make your skin red. However, there are going to be some people depending on the formulations that we have, you could be potentially allergic to a ingredient that coexists with the vitamin C. But the way we've actually formulated the vitamin C serum, you should not see any extreme um, bright redness or irritation to that. And just as you were speaking, we got another question from one of our participants. I'm using a two-in-one serum that includes both retinol and vitamin C. Is using this serum just as effective as using retinol and vitamin C separately? What do you say to that? Uh, really good question. My, my favorite answer is congratulations. You're actually using two really important ingredients. So bravo to you because a lot of patients don't, aren't using any of those. Um, the answer, my best answer is going to be, it's very difficult to compare apples to apples when you're looking at skincare. The biggest factor you will want to look at is are you using an over-the-counter product or are we using a medical grade product? Those are gonna be very big distinguishers for you because as we know, the medical grade ingredients are far more concentrated. The better the concentration that we can get, the better penetration into the skin, better penetration into the skin, the better faster results that you can achieve. So by going back to your question, it's great that you're using the vitamin C retinol it's just going to be a matter of comparing it um, and how fast you would prefer to see really great astonishing results. We know again with medical grade, um, it's going to be much faster achievable. And wouldn't you also say that this product needs to be used at night only, right? Because it has retinol, you wanna make sure you're not exposing yeah. yourself to the sun, right? Exactly. While using it. Yeah, because retinol will provide some sensitivity to the or some sensitivity to the sun from the sun. It's highly recommended if you are using that product that it, if it does contain retinol, use it strictly at night. Uh, but I commend you for for using those two ingredients. That's really amazing. <laughs> exactly. Well, if you have any other questions, please submit them in the chat. And um, you know, I'll just summarize and thank you um, for attending our session today. And thank you so much to our speakers, Dr. Zeray and Patricia. I think it was very informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us, uh, get in touch with us, also come in and see Dr. Zeray and Fountain Valley. 
location or Anaheim and you have her contacts here, but you can also find them online on our website, CaliforniaSkinInstitute.com. Again, thank you so much for attending today. And if there are no more questions, then we'll just sign off. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.